Hello again and welcome to our latest video here on the YouTubes. My name is Jay Tate. I am publisher of AuburnSports.com and I thank you for taking a little bit of time to watch our latest video. Today we're going to be talking about Auburn's uh, win against Georgia Southern the other night, how it worked, um, what Auburn did to get back in that game because I thought it was a little messy there in the first half. It was neck and neck. Auburn led by four at half but really kind of turned the game around a little bit in the second half and we'll try to see maybe how they did that and what that means going forward, uh, they have a game against Davidson on Friday afternoon, 5 o'clock Central Time. Uh, they're actually in Annapolis, Maryland at the Naval Academy, and that will be on the CBS Sports Network live, if you have that on your uh, provider. I think I do. I hope I do, because I'm not in Annapolis right now. Anyway, let's take a look at the shot chart from the Georgia Southern game. Let me get that a little bit bigger here. And uh, nothing too surprising there. I mean, you can see Auburn's either going to the hole and taking uh, either layups, dunks, short-range shots, or they're taking threes. Uh, in general, they didn't shoot very well from three the other night, but they uh, they were good when they needed it to be, and they got a lot of shots inside. 22 of 38 near the bucket, 61%. Uh, very effective, very useful. Did a great job in the half court of getting the ball inside and doing what they wanted to do there. Uh, normally, they're getting a lot of those buckets in transition, but, uh, yeah, that didn't work so much the other night. In fact, a lot of those misses – 16, in fact, near the bucket were in transition. So I'm going to leave this up just so you guys can kind of think about that and marinate on that a little bit. We'll take a look at the top players uh, from the Georgia Southern game and exactly what they did well. Samir Dowdy was the leading scorer. He was given 17 possessions, and he scored 20 points out of him for a 1.176 points per possession. Now, I understand a lot of you, including me, have spent their lives thinking about, okay, well, this guy is 14 points per game or 16 points per game. But the way coaches look at it is it's points per possession based on the kind of scoring that they do. There's a lot of different things you can ask a kid to do to score, spot-up shooting, transition. Uh, you can roll off pick and rolls with the ball. You can roll off pick and rolls as the roller. Uh, you can do ISO. You can do cuts. You can do stick backs. You can do post-ups. There's a lot of different things you can ask kids to do. And in these shows and in this season, we're going to take a closer look at what specifically each player can do, what they do well, what they don't do well, and then we'll see how Auburn kind of accentuates the good things and de-accentuates the negatives. I mean, a smart coach, and Bruce Pearl and his staff are very bright, as evidenced by last season. They're going to do the things that their kids can do well, and we'll kind of watch how that goes as the season goes on. Samir Dowdy was best in transition the other night. Three opportunities, four points for a 1.33 points per possession uh, in transition, which is really good. Um, overall, he had five chances as a spot-up shooter and scored five points, which is like a 1.0 PPP, which is it's okay, not too bad. Uh, but he, again, useful night. He was all over the place. He was good with the ball in his hands. Uh, I thought he set the tone, and that's what you, exactly what you would expect out of Samir. He played a lot last year. He's a good combo guard. He's a good spot-up shooter. He's a good leader. And I think as they give him more opportunities to kind of run the offense as a secondary point guard, if that makes sense. You know, last year, Bryce and Jared had so much. They were doing so much, and they were so good. They deserved it. Samir had a trouble kind of working his way in. This year, he's going to get a lot more opportunities to be on the ball, both as a shooter and, again, as a combo, what I would call a combo guard or like a secondary point. But uh, he was really good the other night. In fact, he definitely was the player of the game for me. Although, if you look at it, Daniel Purifoy, 10 possessions, 13 points for a 1.333 points per possession. That is outstanding. Uh, when you're looking at points per possession, okay, anything over one is good. Uh, anything over 1.1 is pretty damn good. And anything over about 1.2, 1.22 is like elite. So Dan Gell had a great offensive night against Georgia Southern. And you know that because he was shooting up really, really well. Um, we were all remarking there at the game how sweet his stroke is. I had forgotten. I don't know. Last year, he was just kind of a forgotten man, really. I mean, he was suspended or whatever. He was held out. And then he came back, and then he was hurt for a little while, and then he was kind of getting back from that, and he really didn't get in the swing of things until February. And then he never really had a defining game until that game against North Carolina in the NCAA tournament. So it was kind of a lost season in a way. But it did help him insofar as he comes into this season at full speed. And, man, he was ready to go the other night. Great shooting. As a spot-up shooter, four possessions for six points, uh, 1.5 PPP. Great night for him. Isaac Coro, really interesting situation. I mean, true freshman, walks onto the court. I thought his athleticism was incredible. Uh, to me, in practice, 
I thought he was going to be kind of like a more athletic Mustafa Heron and play that same role as a defensive stopper at three and kind of a shooter. I think Isaac is more athletic. I think he can get up. I think he's going to be their best offensive rebounder, even though he's not their tallest guy or even their second tallest guy. But I think he has real instincts there. And we saw that. I've seen it in practice and in scrimmages. We saw it last night, uh, the other night against Georgia Southern. He just has a knack for anticipating rebounds, and then he has the athleticism to kind of get up and tip them back in. Uh, he had 12 possessions for 12 points for a 1.0 PPP. Not a problem at all for a true freshman and just kind of getting his bearings. Uh, post him up three for four, uh, three times for four points, 1.33, which is fine for posting up. He is kind of a bigger, stronger three. Um, you hear about a guy that's going to be a good rebounder and a good offensive rebounder, you're thinking, well, is he going to be kind of a, a bulky three? But he's not. He's just a really athletic dude, and he can post those guys up if it's a team like Georgia Southern who's kind of guard-oriented and a little bit on the smaller side. Uh, but a very encouraging first game, I thought, from Isaac Okoro. Austin Wiley, tricky situation there. 15 possessions, 11 points for a .733. That is not good. Um, a lot of his problem was that it, he, he wasn't good with the hands the other night. They're trying to get inlet passes to him. He just dropped a few. There were other situations where he got the inlet pass fine, but when he was maneuvering to get ready for a shot, he lost the ball. He also lost the ball in transition twice. Um, a poor ball handling effort from him. Now, I understand he's a center, and you're not necessarily going to have the biggest expectations ever for a center, but he's got to be better for that. Uh, he was decent as a post-up guy, five opportunities, four points, .800 PPP for that particular kind of scoring opportunity. Again, not good. You probably want to see someone uh, above 1.0 when they're doing that, but it's one game, and as he gets used to actually getting the ball on the block and then go transitioning from receiving the pass to getting in position to shoot, you will see that number kind of increase. I think it's something that Austin can be really good at. I think he just gets a little jittery. And, you know, it's the first game, and he's now the man. And there is an adjustment there. A lot of people say, well, he's a senior. He's been here forever. Yeah, he has. But there's a lot of expectations on him that weren't there before. And you got to keep that in mind with him. I still think he's going to be great. He's terrific. They're going to give him a lot of chances to do his post-ups. There aren't many guys, I think, out there who are going to be able to repel him. And uh, he's going to be good. Let's take a look at things that didn't go well. In the Georgia Southern game, the turnovers were a mess. I think Auburn finished with 22, which is the most they've had in a game since the NC State debacle last year. Uh, they played horribly over there and lost. And I think uh, I remember after that, the, the team was talking about, you know, can't do that anymore. We got to value possessions better. And they did, really did going forward. Um, they did not value possessions at all again in this game against Georgia Southern. Um, just way too many turnovers. 22.5 turnover percentage, meaning almost a quarter of their possessions were turnovers. That's just not acceptable. And it was actually 35% turnover percentage in transition. That is exorbitant for a team that has this background as a transition team. Now, Pearl has warned us all season that, hey, I know you're used to seeing Auburn out in transition and running really fast. Don't think this team's going to be quite like that. I kind of called bullshit on that because Pearl always builds his teams to run. But after what we saw in this game, and I don't think Georgia Southern is like elite defensively. They are quick, but I don't know if they're elite at all. And for Auburn to have this much trouble in transition tells me they've got a lot of learning to do in that spacing out, understanding what they can and can't do when they're actually transitioning uh, toward the bucket. But 35% in transition is ridiculous. It was only 18% in the half court, as a note there. Uh, Auburn in general was very good in its half-court sets, and I think that's a really encouraging sign. I thought it would be the other way. Uh, but they have some really good scores. They just got a little spazzy, I thought, in transition. Transition offense, 23 opportunities, 16 points for a .696. The 14% there tells you what they, are, what they are compared to the other teams in the country. And they're in the bottom 14%. That is not good, particularly for a Bruce Pearl team. It's just not – we're not used to seeing that, and they're definitely going to get better. Transition defense, again, they just lost their minds a little bit. As soon as transition picked up, they just got too excited, and they weren't paying attention to their defensive assignments. Uh, Georgia Southern gets 21 possessions in transition, turns that into 27 points. And, uh, yeah, you can see those two numbers there, transition offense versus transition defense. Georgia Southern was doing a much better job getting out in transition and, and finishing at the rim when they got there. And also I mentioned lack of focus on both ends. 
you kind of see where I was going with that in the last two minutes of the show. But I will say this. Auburn is up four at halftime. Georgia Southern is basically doing two things. They're doing they're getting in transition and they're finishing at the bucket. They're also doing pick and rolls with the ball handler rolling off the screen and either getting downhill or shooting, mostly getting downhill in the first half. I thought Auburn was conceding too much ground on those drives, almost like they weren't willing to really fight for position to get in front of those drives and build a wall against it. Halftime, obviously, BP chewed their ass, and they came out fighting in those individual matchups a whole lot better. And after about five minutes, Georgia Southern essentially scrapped that that scheme, and they started going to spot-up shooting, and really it didn't go very well. Auburn's defense against the spot-up shooting was tremendous, and that, to me, is the reason why uh, Auburn won that game by uh, a decent amount. Let's take a look at some things that did go well for the Auburn Tigers. As I mentioned, their half-court offense was terrific. 66 possessions in the half-court, 65 points for a .985 PPP. That puts them in the 82nd percentile uh, nationally. I know that's kind of a small sample size, but they were fine. They did a good job there. Particularly with the spot-up shooting, I'm not surprised because Samir's so good at that. Dangel's really good at that. Generally, Ant's really good at that, although he was poor the other night. Okoro's good at that. Javon's usually good at that. I mean, they got a lot of good spot-up shooters, um, and they're going to have a chance to be really good at that. They were good at that the other night. Another encouraging sign was the stickbacks. Now, it was only four possessions, which is kind of a small sample size, but four chances, eight points for a 2.0 PPP. They'll never be able to sustain that, but that might be a spot where, you know, 15 games from now, maybe we're looking at that and it's 1.5 PPP or 1.4, and they're one of the truly elite national teams. I mean, Ant, I know Ant's got it in him to be able to be to do that. I know Austin Wiley's going to be able to do that, and I know is going to be able to do that. That's three guys right there that I think are going to be really good at stickbacks and getting the ball put back in. That's something that Auburn can kind of hang its hat on going forward, I think. A half-court defense was good the other night. Actually, tremendous. Uh, when Georgia Southern started to uh, go into jump shooting after Auburn had shut down the drives, there really wasn't nothing doing. 64 possessions and 47 points. That, that really isn't pissing to drop. And then uh, spot-up shooting, 22 possessions, 13. That's really bad. Um, Georgia Southern just didn't really have much to do there. They didn't know where to go. And I mentioned earlier, better fight during the second half. Like I said, Georgia Southern was rolling off those screens and and crashing downhill, and Auburn was not contesting those drives enough. BP got into them. They made the adjustment, and Georgia Southern's offensive efficiency tailed off, and Auburn kind of kept theirs going, and that was the difference in the game, I thought. Uh, Overall, a pretty good performance uh, for Auburn. I know a lot of people would say, well, it's only 10, you know, against a team like Georgia Southern. Who cares? But – it was kind of a tough matchup for them. Georgia Southern's quick, and they're guard-oriented, and they've got some experience. And I don't know. I like the way that they, they came through it. I like the way Auburn came through it. I like the way Okoro played. I think he's going to be more reliable early on than I thought he would be. So if you've got Samir going at it, Dangel going at it, Okoro, you assume Austin's going to be a little bit better. Uh, the question here for me is Javon. I thought he looked a little confused at times. You know, last year he was basically there to be a downhill driver and a transition specialist because he was just playing when Jared wasn't in there. He was really good at it. Now he's having to be an administrator and work the pick and rolls a little bit more and kind of control the tempo. I don't think it's something he was doing before. I know it wasn't. And I thought he looked a little tenuous with that. But we'll see in this Davidson game if he can adjust a little bit. Davidson, uh, let's see, they played one exhibition so far. So this game against Auburn will be their first game of the year officially. And in their exhibition, they played a team called Glenville State. I think that's in West Virginia. And they won at 102 to 94. Uh, it's hard to tell in an exhibition exactly what's going on, but I know that they gave plenty of opportunities to four of their five starters. So anybody can shoot on that team. And they also had a guy coming off the bench who had nine shots as well. Uh, they didn't rebound very well against that team. And it makes me think that Auburn can have some real uh, advantages there. But knowing Davidson the heritage they have, the success that they've had in the past, and it's the same coaching staff. They're going to have great guards. They're going to get at you on the press. They're not necessarily going to beat you in transition, but they're just going to be quick with their passes, and they know exactly what they want to do uh, down the scoring end. So defensively, you can't have those mental lapses. You've got to stay in the game, and you got to fight all the time. Auburn showed they can do that. Will they be able to do it for the full 40? We'll find out this week. And again, they're playing Davidson 5 o'clock Central Time, on the CBS Sports Network that's going to be played at the uh, Naval Academy there in Annapolis, Maryland. 
And let me see. One last thing I want to do is take a look at that roster grid. We showed you this before the game, and now we'll look at it afterwards. Nothing really changes. You've got your starters over there, and I thought the second team guys were basically exactly what we expected. Jamal Johnson had five shots uh, against Georgia Southern. He only hit one. Had a couple cuts that I thought he had a chance to finish on, and he missed them both. We had talked in the show last week that we thought he could be a really good cutter. That was something he did well at Memphis, and they gave him a couple chances. He didn't finish this time. We'll see if they stick with that. I think he can be good at that. Devin Cambridge was good off the bench, hit a couple threes, and looked really good. I told you guys he has kind of a weird shot where his legs are spread a little bit, and he seems kind of cockeyed about it. He has weird body shape, but, man, he can hit those shots. And I thought he looked really good. He's number 35. Ant McLemore was terrible the other night. Um, just got to hope for better from him. And as far as the third team guys go, Ty Jones played a little bit. He had one turnover, and they just BP sat his ass. Uh, Alan Flanagan played okay. He probably only played a handful of minutes. Uh, Jalen didn't play, and uh, Stretch didn't play either. So looks like they're going for more like uh, maybe a nine-man rotation right now. You know BP will want to spread it out a little bit, but we'll see how it goes in time. All right, guys, I'll let it go right there. I don't want to go too long. Uh, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We are almost to 3,000 subscribers now on our channel. Dude, in, in August, I was like, please, let's get to 1,000. And now we're almost to three. I thank you guys so much for your support. If you're not a subscriber, just hit that subscribe button. Get, get on the team. Get on the bus. Let's do this thing. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you have any suggestions, if you have any questions, put them there in the comments, man. I read them. I'll get back to you as soon as I can, all right? Appreciate you watching. Till we see you again. Keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars.